everyone, this is with Collect Jurassic, back with a huge Mattel Jurassic World Dominion toy unboxing. We have a lot to look at the, on the review table today. Of course, we have these Human and Dinosaur 2 packs, Owen, Velociraptor Blue, or sorry, Velociraptor Beta, the baby of blue. Really excited to take a look at that one, all new figure. Also a little fox there if you didn't make that one out. We also have uh, Claire and Dilophosaurus. Uh, there's something really cool going on with this Dilophosaurus that I can't wait to talk about. It's more than meets the eye. It's not the figure you're used to. And of course, those human figures are exciting in and of themselves. So we'll definitely be doing some comparisons to the Fallen Kingdom figures between Claire and Owen to see what's different. We also have the four ferocious pack figures. We have Miragaya, we have Velociraptor Blue, we have Moros Intrepidus, and we have Sungaripterus. Four different dinosaurs, uh, or I guess we should say dinosaurs slash flying reptiles to look at that are, um, three of them are all new to uh, the Jurassic World toy roster. So that's pretty exciting. And the blue figure is technically new too. So we'll take a look at that as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started because we have a lot to cover. There's a lot of toys to unbox and review. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with uh, Miragaya here up on top. And we'll look at this ferocious pack uh, packaging as well, because it's definitely unique and a little bit different than what we're used to seeing from Mattel Jurassic World toys. Um, so Miragai here is literally just an open air box it's on a card back, has this kind of little plastic blister bubble. And, uh, you know, this is a little different than what we're used to considering the price point. These are basically um, somewhere in between uh, the previous attack packs or we called them ferocious packs, or sorry, attack packs and wild packs, right? Um, somewhere along the line, they became wild packs. Now we have ferocious packs, but these are a little bit more deluxe than those $7.99 figures. I think they these will run somewhere between $9 and $11, depending on where you're buying the toys at. Um, but they do have uh, a little bit more articulation than we're used to in that price point. They also have, in some cases, a little bit more paint, in some cases, a little bit less paint. And they also have no like gimmicky action feature like Savage Strike would. They don't have, you know, any kind of um, Savage Strike being a little more expensive with some, you know, uh, slashing claws or whipping tails. There's none of that going on here. They're, these are literally just articulated figures um, with, with, you know, some posability with them. So um, that out of the way, again, Ferocious Pack, sort of a new assortment halfway in between. And the packaging is really weird because it's not like a figure wrapped in a blister. It's, it's out in the air. So, you know, people in the store can touch it and manipulate it and all that stuff. And it's kind of weird that it's just like piece of cardboard with a, literally a piece of plastic and a toy tied to it. Kind of strange packaging. Um, but, uh, you know, I suppose it's a little bit more innovative than what we're used to. So... Uh, you got to appreciate it for at least being original. Of course, as far as the artwork goes, we have that beautiful Rex back there with the Dominion logo um, that we've already looked at in our other videos. Um, like the Dominion packaging is great. It definitely pops off the shelf. All those nice little amber highlights are a lot of fun. Every packaging will also have the example of the scan code and downloading these um, Jurassic Facts apps. You can uh, use those scan codes. And on the back of every figure, you're going to see, um, you know, what other figures are available in this wave, in this assortment for um, ferocious packs. You can see uh, Morus, Blue, and uh, Sun Sungaripterus all back there. Um, and then a bunch of um, bunch of different languages too. These are the international versions of these figures. So it's a lot more different language things going on than maybe the US releases of these go. But let's go ahead and get uh, Miragi Mir Miragaya out. I'm really trying to pronounce these names better. I hope you guys take notice. Miragaya um, is definitely one I'd never heard of until I saw this toy. So Mattel is always teaching me something different about uh, about Jurassic, uh, dinosaurs, rather. So here is uh, Miragaya out of the box. Nice little stegosaurus here. Um, you know, definitely a simpler paint application. It's literally just gray, and then it has this darker paint and darker casted plastic in the front with a little bit of a highlight on the, on the uh, you know, the face there. As, and then we have the horns that are actually a, a separate casted plastic, which I really like because that means when this is banging around on the shelf or in your collection, you know, this, this paint doesn't come off these horns, which I really appreciate. And they're bendy too. So um, different cast plastic for the horns different cast plastic for these darker legs so uh you know from a toy production standpoint it's kind of cool that the, this first part of the figure is cast in darker plastic second part half of the figure is cast in lighter plastic then they use some paint to kind of blend it which is kind of fun um as, as far as articulation goes and all that on this guy we've got the uh the tail that just kind of rotates back and forth nothing there uh the legs rotate of course or sorry pivot 
up and down or back and forth, I should say. And then the front legs do the exact same thing. There's no hinge on them that make, lets them, you know, rotate out from the body. So definitely basic articulation, not like we would see, you know, with the ferocious or a savage strike figure that has a little bit bigger range of motion in the legs. However, there is a nice range of motion here with the head. You can do all kinds of stuff. It rotates, it goes up and down. So you can make, uh, you know, mirror guy here eat, eat. Speaking of eating, its mouth opens too. So you can make it, you know, sit there and graze. I think it's a herbivore. So it'd be sitting there eating or making it, you know, call for help. I love the way its mouth looks actually. Let's take a look at the head here. Um, it's got these really cool, I guess you'd call them, you know, gums or something or that, that area of skin between the, uh, the uh, both sets of the mouth. So it kind of looks cool when you've got that mouth open. It looks a lot nicer, actually. See those little eyes painted too, really nicely. So some fine detail there. We got the teeth painted in the mouth on the bottom. The whole inside of the mouth is painted. Uh, I'm definitely, you know, this guy's weird. He's a weird looking dinosaur. He's got this really long neck, kind of looks like a rubber toy, but you know, I haven't seen him with his mouth open yet. And that almost makes him feel a little bit better <laughs> to me. His neck still feels really long, but I think that's sort of anatomical um, with Miragaya itself. I don't think I'm, I think I'm picking on the, the skeletal structure of the dinosaur. It's just the way it looks. So, so of course the toy's gonna look like that. But I really like that open mouth. I think that's kind of fun with uh, with that like stretched skin in between the jaws. That looks, that looks really nice actually. Uh, let's go ahead and compare it to some other Mattel Stegosaurus while we're at it. I'm gonna make some room here. Um, you know, obviously we have the classic Mattel Stegosaurus that definitely dwarfs um, little Miragaya here. Um, and the newer release of the Kentrosaurus as well, which in and of itself is smaller than Stegosaurus. Um, but Miragaya is still uh, gonna be on the smaller size, smaller end of that. And then of course, probably the, the closest we have is uh, this one. I think this is a uh, Chialingosaurus. Um, this is technically a uh, more expensive figure. This is a Savage Strike line. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's it's supposed to be a, a more deluxe figure than I guess this Ferocious pack is. But it's very similar in size, honestly. These two, I mean, here's the spread of all the Mattel Stegosaurs we have right now from Mattel. Um, here, I'm going to go ahead and move these dinosaurs back. So we have a little bit more room to check this stuff out. Sorry, just bear with me here. Um, okay, that's a little better. So you can see kind of everything that Mattel has come out with in terms of Stegosaurs, uh, Stegosaurs right now um, with Miragaya and uh, Chilingosaurus. Definitely on the more similar scale as far as size goes. I don't know if in real life these animals were the same size, but the toys are definitely very comparable in size. I would say Miragai is actually um, a little bit, it's definitely shorter and it seems a little bit more narrow than Chialingosaurus, but um, definitely two really unique dinosaur species. Obviously they have different things going on than Stegosaurus and Kentrosaurus. Um, I definitely think Miragai is similar to Stegosaurus similar to Kentrosaurus in that it has those, you know, those shoulder spikes, the plates become spikes in the back. So it's definitely got a lot of, a lot of similarities with Kentrosaurus out the gate, but it's got that posable mouth that the other Stegosaurus don't have. So it's got an edge. It's got something that makes it unique, something that makes it a little bit more collectible from the Mattel line. So um, definitely that added articulation is what makes Mirror guy here, kind of fun. So let's go ahead and look at Velociraptor Blue. Um, kind of a, you know, a, what would I say? Like a a, a, a must-have figure in the Mattel Jurassic line, whether us collectors want another blue or not. It's just sort of a, a, a staple of the line, I guess was the word I'm looking for. Um, because it's blue, it's one of the main dinosaur characters in the movie. So of course it's going to get a toy in this first wave. And it actually is a new figure. We'll take a look here. Um, it's a new figure. It's not really based. It's based off maybe some of the other figures, but all in all, it's a new figure. I've already talked about the packaging. Again, nothing special on this one. So let's go ahead and just bust blue out of her packaging um, and start taking a look at this figure. So these ferocious pack figures don't have any kind of gimmicks. You know what I missed on um, uh, Mirror Guy here is the the scan code, right? <laughs> which is actually awesome because it literally comes from the plates. It, it blends in perfectly. You can't see it 
at all. I know people complain about these uh, scan tags, but sometimes they do a really good job hiding them, right? I mean, that thing just goes, comes right out of the spikes and goes right back in without even um, without even noticing. So that looks nice on the mirror guy. Sorry, skip that. Let's get back to blue. Sorry, blue. Didn't mean to interrupt your showcase here. So there's the blue figure. Um, again, this is a new figure. Uh, it's definitely you know reminiscent of some of the other blue figures that we have but all in all i mean the the molding on the legs is totally different than anything we've seen the tail is definitely different it's kind of like a droopy tail it almost makes the figure look a little awkward i almost wonder if i'm posing it wrong but i was looking at it in the packaging and i think this is literally just kind of how it poses maybe or or, or does it go like that i don't know I mean, I, the, it looks it looks weird to me it just doesn't look quite right but I think I, I mean, maybe this does it go like this. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry. It was looking really weird in the package. When it, you, I don't know if you noticed, but I had it in a package like this and it just looked a little sad. It looked like blue was, you know, I don't know, worried or something, but it actually is meant to pose up. Let me see if I can get it back to where it was. It meant to, meant to be up like that. So it definitely looks a little better already. Um, but as far as articulation with blue goes, um, you know, it's got, it's got back and forth legs like an attack pack raptor it's got back and forth arms like an attack pack raptor but what's special about this and i'm going to kind of call this out on all these new ferocious pack figures is that ball joint head that we looked at with mirror gaia 2 that lets you do some really nice fun poses and of course the jaws articulate too so you can you know look down or look up or you can even look behind you and you know roar at uh, beta to hurry up, um, which is, you know, this this articulation is one of our favorite things about previous Raptor releases from Mattel. I'm gonna go ahead and get the, my personal favorite blue figure, the, um, the battle damage version. It had a similar articulated neck that let you do some really cool things. Um, so the fact that they brought it to these, this basic blue figure, um, is definitely, um, a step in the right direction, a nice evolution of this basic figure. But of course, being a basic figure, it is missing some stuff. It's missing, you know, paint on the claws, you know, and this Raptor figure had paint on those toe claws. So it's a little obvious here, um, but it does have that lighter belly color that a lot of the nicer blue figures with a better paint budget have like this uh, battle damage one. Um, it's got, of course, painted mouth and painted teeth and a painted tongue. So there's some nice stuff there. And I believe this Raptor figure, this base Raptor figure, right, is going to be used a couple times um, from Mattel in this first Dominion toy wave. I know the extreme damage Raptor, as well as the Raptor that comes with the uh, capture and crush truck, and also the Raptor that comes with the new Legacy uh, kitchen set with Tim and Lex all use this Raptor as a base mold. Um, and here it is just, you know, being used by Blue, right? Um, but we'll definitely be seeing it again with other paint applications. And I'm a little more excited about those because I have plenty of nice Blue figures already. I don't think this one, you know, brings anything special to the table. The paint, of course, you got the blue stripe on it with the white outline, which we didn't always get in our blue figures, but they brought it here with that blue and white stripe. Other than that, you know, there's not a lot going on. It's got a gray body, again, that beige belly, no painted claws. Of course, the eyes and teeth are painted, but other than that, it's nothing special. Not, you know, um, sort of dethroning my favorite blue figure, which is this um, battle damage version. This one's still... Um, for my money, uh, um, a lot cool, a lot more cool of a figure just because uh, it, it, it's a little more articulated. It's got better articulation with the arms and all that, but um, we didn't sit here and, you know, talk about how awesome this battle damage blue figure is. We are talking about this ferocious pack figure. And for what it is, uh, you know, eight or nine buck figure, it's definitely a little bit more decent of a blue than we're used to at this price point with that added, you know, head articulation and all that. Other than that, though, there's not a lot going on. I wish it had a little bit better paint but it's got a dna tag of course too hidden right there on the hip that slides in and slides out pretty slick you can see it back there real obvious on this one from the top but i'm not really bothered by those I, there's bigger bigger fish to fry um for me as far as critiques for the mattel jurassic line which is really that that disappearing paint application on a lot of these figures i mean you can see on this one the blue stripe doesn't even go to the tail it just abruptly ends Whereas on my favorite figure, it goes almost all the way to the tip of the tail. Even that light colored paint goes all the way to the tip of the tail versus on this blue, it just ends underneath the pelvis, which, you know, it's a bummer because, um, 
you know, it, it, it definitely, at first glance, makes the figure seem a little cheaper when you don't have paint on the claws and don't have paint on the tail. That stuff is all just sort of a bummer. So um, I hope that we get a little bit nicer of a blue figure um, later on with a little bit more paint for Dominion because that one is just leaves a little bit to, to be desired. So next up, we're going to look at Moros Intrepidus, which is technically a movie movie dinosaur, right? It is in the prologue, that IMAX exclusive screening that eventually made its way online, um, but featured Moros Intrepidus eating out of Giganotosaurus's jaws. Um, this figure doesn't look anything like it, right? Um, it's it doesn't it's got bright colors. It's kind of cartoony looking, um, but it is supposed to be Moros Intrepidus. Go ahead and get Moros out here. This is supposed to be Moros Intrepidus, not from the show or from the movie, I guess, but um, sort of doing its own thing. Kind of a fun figure, right? It's it's got some style to it. I I wouldn't call it movie accurate, of course. But uh, I do, I do, I gotta call out what they're doing with the sculpted plastic with this figure again too. You have that light colored, it's almost like an orange sculpted tail, scu sculpted in that colored plastic, right? Um, and then you also have that light colored um, <clears throat> jaw and arms that are sculpted in that lighter colored plastic. And then we have paint blending that together with the body, paint blending this tail with the body. You can see they put a little splash of the body paint on the... Uh, on the tail to, to blend it a little bit. Um, still got some harsh transitions in my opinion. Um, I mean, you can definitely see the seams here where the tail and the body meet, but they tried. Um, interesting, it's an interesting paint application on a uh, interesting mold. Definitely not my favorite mold. This is, uh, you know, kind of from the line of Mattel dinosaurs that look a little bit cartoony, look a little bit like Ghostbuster monsters. Um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, articulation. On this one, we're gonna have the, uh, the legs that that uh, go back and forth and the arms that go back and forth. And then like all these other amazing ferocious pack articulated features, we have that ball joint head. That's what makes all these figures for me is being able to do all ranges of motion on these all of a sudden so that we can do some, some uh, you know, some more unique poses, especially when you have a couple of them. And then the jaw is articulated on this one too. It's got that little fold of skin that I like so much on uh, Miragaya. Um, that just kind of makes it feel a little bit more realistic. Got the little painted beady eye there on uh, Moros. Um, but uh, yeah, it definitely doesn't look anything like the uh, the, the film, right? And, and detail-wise, it's got some nice feathers and, and scales and all that. But I mean, it still looks like a little bit simple. I mean, look at the feet. They're big and there's big soft features, big giant soft claws. Um, I mean, there's nice detail, like in, like zoomed in, there's nice detail with the scales and the feathers. But other than that, I mean, as a toy, it's not really doing anything for me, especially considering the Moros and the prologue looks so cool. It's like, I'd love to see um, a Moros that looks more like the film version, a little bit darker, even a little bit smaller, right? I mean, this, shouldn't this figure technically be smaller? Um, but I mean, I'm, it's, it's still, you know, a new species and it's got something unique with it, with all this plumage and, and feathers and sort of this, uh, wacky dual ridge of feathers on the head makes it a little bit more unique. Um, and I love those ball joint, ball joint heads, um, on all these figures. It just, you let you, lets you do some cool poses, right? So that's Moros. Um, finally for a ferocious pack. We have Sungaripterus, uh, definitely another dinosaur I'd never heard of, um, or not dinosaur, flying reptile, sorry. Don't wanna get in trouble with my uh, my paleo fan base. Um, but definitely one I'd never heard of, and I th and one that I'm actually, uh, I'm actually thrilled to own because it's got a very unique, oops, very unique head shape compared to some of the other Mattel um, flying reptiles. So Sungaripterus, Look at this thing, cool. I love the colors on this. I love that um, sort of lighter base color and the head. It's got some really fun color and detail on it as well. Um, yeah, it's all sort of, it's all sculpted in this lighter colored plastic except for the head, which is um, kind of blended with the rest of the body, like I mentioned. Um, articulation wise, this has got some really cool articulation too. Of course, the wings are going to flap up and down, so you can make it, um, you can make it a uh, sort of in different flying poses, right? Depending on what you want to do. Here's it sort of like 
you know, landing pose. Um, and then the, the legs actually pose really nicely too. They're on one hinge though. Note that they're on one hinge. They can't be manipulated separately, which is a little bit cheap. Um, and then of course you can kind of make this guy land. Let's see if we can make this guy make this guy fully land. Now he's going to look ridiculous if we do that. So even though the legs kind of fold out underneath him, he doesn't really doesn't really properly do any kind of landing pose. Does have articulated neck joint that lets him go up and down and side to side. So like all these ferocious pack figures, just that nice neck articulation. Then we have a jaw that shuts to him. And look at the unique beak on Sungdoripterus here. It kind of like curves up. It's really fun, really different. And I like the little um, the little crest here. Let's go ahead and compare uh, Sungdoripterus with some of the other Mattel um, flying reptile figures. I got them all here off camera. But it really reminds me of the most is um, this Tape Jara. Um, as far as, you know, comparable Mattel figures. Uh, it's got that really unique head, like Tape Jara. Um, and it's got an interesting name, Sungdoripterus. So um, two interesting flying reptiles from Mattel. Um, of course, Tape Jara is a little bit of a deluxe figure, so it has an action feature, whereas um, little uh, Sungdoripterus here does not have um, that flapping feature. Of course, we have Dimorphodon too. Always a classic from the Mattel line since it's from the movie. There's tons of uh, tons of <laughs> Dimorphodon repoints at this point. So welcoming another flying reptile and stung Doriptorus for sure. Um, it's a lot bigger. I mean, you can see these are these are uh, you know kind of similarly priced figures, but uh, stung Doriptorus feels a little bit more of a substantial, beefier figure. We also have why is the name uh, oh Ramphoricus? I was gonna say I'm about to forget this name. Ramphoricus, Dimorphodon, Cape Jara. Of course, we also have the Pteranodon as well. Um, so it, it definitely scales with all these figures in terms of its size. It's very, very similar um, to, to uh, what's come before from Mattel, but uh, a unique flying reptile in that it's got just a very interesting head silhouette with that, um, with that really cool curved up beak. I love it. I love it closed. I love the open. Really nice looking figure. Probably my favorite out of all four of these ferocious pack figures, which, um, you know, isn't even a dinosaur, but I just love the way its head looks. And I love, look, it's even got a painted tongue. That's fun. So, um, yeah, gotta love Sung Doriptorus. You know what? I forgot the scan tag on Moros again. I won't forget it on, uh, I won't forget it on Sung Doriptorus here because it's really interesting. It's actually a trap door on the entire body that opens up. Um, which is kind of kind of funny. <laughs> it kind of ruins the figure a little bit uh, because it, you have this huge door on the back with this giant hinge, but it does blend in quite well besides this little part up here. Other than that, it blends in really well. You really can't see it until you see that that big hinge to the door, but they couldn't, they didn't have enough plastic to make the little pull-out piece, right? So they had to fit it in here somehow, and that's how they did it, I guess. So that's how you scan this one. Um, Sungaripterus, though, look at all the, the feather detail on this. Interesting. Really leaning into feathers with these figures, which is cool to see because it's giving us something a little different than what we have from Mattel. So no feathers on the head, right? Um, maybe a little bit on the neck, but otherwise no feathers. Um, I love this one, though. Definitely my favorite. Unique, a unique flying reptile. So right, let's go ahead and visit Moros here so I can show you the scan tag for this one, too. Give me a second. Man, some of these are really hard to get out. Yep, I got it though. So it comes out the, the back and slides in just like that, in, out. There it is on the back. It blends in pretty well, honestly. There's like a little bit of a spinal ridge back there that they've kind of bumped out for this that helps it blend really well. I did want to do a quick comparison, just size-wise for Moros, just so everyone could get an idea of kind of how big this figure is. Um, I thought Alio Ramus was a really good comparison for Moros because, um, you know, they're, they're similarly sized carnivores as far as toys go. I mean, this is basically the same size figure um, with just, um, in some ways, more articulation with that ball joint head. So just to give you an idea of size with Moros, it's 
it's com comparable to Ali Ramis. So um, I'm jumping all around this review. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm kind of going back and forth and looking at figures we already put away. But um, there's just so much to cover. And I'm so excited because there's so much new stuff. I mean, th these are all new species, which is really, really exciting. So let's continue with the newness party and take a look at the human and dinosaur two packs with Owen and Vel Velociraptor Beta. I'm gonna try to not say blue a bunch of times in this, um, but it's gonna take some getting used to because I'm so used to saying blue after Velociraptor, so um, forgive me. And we also have Owen um, as well, Blue Shirt Owen, which we've got a few Blue Shirt Owen figures from Mattel already, but let's go ahead and see how this one is different. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop open this guy. There we go. I guess I should cut out beta as well. Boom, boom. That little tiny beta. Oh, you're so cute. Looks like there's some accessories with Owen. He's got a gun. Of course, I've got that fox too. You know what I didn't do was look at the packaging. See, I'm, I'm just I'm ripping into these things. You know, there's nothing special. It's got the, uh, the, the art that we're used to, but also has a little render on the back with the three included characters as well as Claire. Um, who's included as well. So, um, kind of fun. Let's go ahead and get Blue, or sorry, get Owen and his accessories out. He's got the little fox. He's got himself. He's got a gun. Nice gun, too. And he also has this little tiny knife, which I, we were used to with the, uh, the Fallen Kingdom figures. It's got some tape in here, so... Give me a second. This is gonna be a little harder to, to free than just pulling it out of the plastic. There we go, boom, all right. Um, boy, I already see how this Owen's different. He's got a, uh, a nice little sheath back here that his knife fits into, how about that? The other one just was a little peg. So um, already seeing the differences um, with these figures. And he's got this cool gun too. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the dinosaur and then we'll get to Owen. Let me just get him get him um, properly uh, properly armed here with his, with his rifle. Come on, hold this thing, buddy. You got the, you got the hands for it. All right, so, and there's his little pet fox. <laughs> here is a uh, beta. Um, you know, from the trailer, we know that um, Blue has offspring, right? And this is a really cool little figure, honestly. Uh, I really dig this thing, especially just looking at the the Ferocious Pack Blue. This one has even more detail. You can see that the claws are painted. Um, it has like a lighter colored underbelly. It has these little tiny arms that are on hinges, so they uh, they move out like this. So a little bit more articulation on, on Beta as well. Um, he's got the, or she's got the, the the legs they're little scrawny chicken legs too super cute she's also got the the neck that moves it's on a yep it's on a ball joint so it can also you know look look around and look up and i think she'll look behind her yeah she'll look behind her too so a lot of fun poses you can do with that little ball joint it also has that mouth that opens little tiny teeth inside adorable then that signature blue stripe that goes down. So um, I love the the arms are my favorite though. I mean, look at them. They're they're little tiny, little tiny baby dino arms. They're so cute. Everything about them is or her is cute. She's got little thin ankles too. I mean, she's just adorable. But she's kind of got a chunky head. Look at the little pose she can do. I mean, how fun is that? That is really fun. Um, just an adorable little baby. Baby, not baby blue, little baby beta. It also has the big scan tag back here. Look how big this thing is. They put it in widthwise, but at least they didn't give her a trap door. So pulls in and pulls out, blends in really well. Little tiny baby beta. I love it. So cute. So cute. Now, how does she look next to blue, right? I mean, here's our ferocious pack blue figure. And here's beta. She looks big, right? She looks a little... A little bigger than she does in the trailer. Um, substantial figure, uh, uh, you know, but not, but not a, uh, you know, not too small, I guess. But it's a substantial figure. It's definitely a worth the price that you're getting it with a human dinosaur. They didn't make it too small. Um, but I remember we have also have a baby, also have baby uh, 
Baby Blue from Fallen Kingdom. This came with uh, Raptor Trainer Owen. So this is Baby Blue when she was really little. So you can see all three um, sizes of, uh, you know, Velociraptor. We have Adult Blue, sort of Juvenile Beta, and then Baby Blue. Kind of fun. Get to see her grow up through the through the ages, right? Pretty cool. Um, I love this. Love this little chicken chicken dino though. Love the little arms and the articulation. Look at that. You can make her cock her head like, huh? What's going on? So cute, man. I can't believe this is the only release they're gonna do of of Beta in this two pack because this is gonna be a really popular character, I think, and definitely a really popular toy. So um, that's cool. Wow, already impressed with this set just with uh, Beta here. Let's go ahead and look at the fox. Uh, kind of a funny little um, inclusion here. I don't think we've got a lot of farm animals or, or forest animals or any any kind of non-dinosaur animals um, from Mattel. So here's a fox. It's pretty decent. You know, it's got the orange color, some white highlights on it with the white snout. It's got some painted eyes and a painted nose. I mean, for what it is, they... They did a decent job. It's It's got a nice little detail on it. I think that the fox is used as maybe bait. If you watch the trailer, there's like a trap that's set that they catch Beta in. So maybe that's where the fox comes in or maybe they become friends in the movie and there's a whole subplot about dinosaurs becoming friends with uh, modern animals. I don't know. That's just uh, that's just me speculating, but kind of fun. Nice little, nice little uh, you know, bonus animal here with your Jurassic toys with this little fox. And then, of course, we got Owen here, um, Blue Shirt Owen, a, a, a toy that we got several times at Fallen Kingdom, um, Blue Shirt Owen. Um, but, you know, he's got some cool detail here. He's got really nice texture on his pants. I don't know if you can see that. Really nice texture. And like I said before, he's got this sheath on him for his little knife that goes in there. If you go ahead and uh, look at the previous blue figure, dig them out down here um here's here's uh sorry not blue blue shirt owen he has a knife as well but his knife i'm sorry let me get the new owen to stand up come on owen stand up for me so i don't have to keep messing with you um the old owen's knife popped out on a little peg and went in and was basically um impossible not to lose uh you lost it all the time at least i did um uh, but this new one has this sheath, right, that literally slides in and out. The knife is a little more detailed, too. Um, so that's that's Owen. I do notice that he's got a darker colored hair and darker colored mustache compared to the old Owen. You can see right here how different color their ha their hair is. I will say likeness-wise, at least on the figure I have in my hands, um, it's definitely a toss-up. Yeah, it's a toss-up. I almost want to give it to the old blue shirt Owen for Chris Pratt. But the new one, on certain angles, looks a lot more like him, too. His eyes are a little bigger for whatever reason. Um, but, yeah, these figures are identical. I thought at first glance maybe one maybe one was a little bit bigger than the other, but they are pretty much the same. I will say that the leg articulation is a little bit different. They're retooled figures for sure. I mean, the legs are articulated a little bit different on these new Mattel figures um, where they meet the hip. They have a smaller hinge. They don't look quite as awkward. Um, but other than that, they, they articulate the same. Let's go ahead and talk about articulation. Quit talking about our comparison to our old Owen. These little three and three quarter figures have a ton of range with um, you know shoulder joints that rotate and hinge out, elbow joints that rotate and hinge out, um, oh, they gave this guy awesome shoulder elbow articulation so that he can hold his gun like he's supposed to, which I, for one, really appreciate that. And, of course, I already talked about how the legs articulate. You also have the knees and the, um, the hips already talked about. And I think the waist, yeah, the waist articulates as well, and then the head does too. So you can do quite a bit of crazy stuff with these figures. Um, you know, for being basic human figures, this isn't Hammond Collection with added articulation. You know, this is something a little... A little more straightforward. So let's go ahead and have Owen hold his gun here. Speaking of guns, I mean, look at this thing. This thing's pretty detailed. It's got like a scope and all that stuff. Compared to the rifle that we got and uh, you know from Mattel in 2018, this is literally another Mattel rifle that we got. Look how much smaller and sort of undetailed it is compared to the new one on top. So this one was 
comically small when the human characters uh, held it. So now we have something a little bit more substantial for Owen to hold on to. Um, and I'm glad he's getting a gun because they use guns in the movie and we got all these ridiculous accessories that weren't guns last time around. So, well, I mean, I think we, I think we can all acknowledge that in, in the Jurassic world films, the characters use guns. So the human, the, the, the toys that come, come out of them should have guns as well. I like it. He's got an individual trigger finger that he can hold the gun with, which is really nice. So he can hold it pretty well. I'd say so. Um, that's Owen. Again, a little bit more detailed, that much different than the previous Owen. Um, and he comes with a fox. So, Owen, the fox, and Beta. I love it. Especially love this Beta figure. It is just adorable and detailed and all kinds of fun articulation. So, um, Mattel nailed it. Nailed the beta. I love I love this figure. Adorable and cute. Like it should be because it's a baby dinosaur. So let's go ahead and take a look at our final figure on the table. Uh, Claire and Dilophosaurus. Very excited about this one. Um, that Dilophosaurus looks awesome. So let's go ahead and get it out. Boom, boom. Dilophosaurus out. Go ahead and get Claire out. Oops gonna be the same thing where we have to pop all of her little tiny accessories out of the plastic but i'm up to the challenge here oh we got venom too for the dilophosaurus can't miss that we have claire herself she also has a little tiny almost looks like a cell phone or something it's not going to be easy to get out here on camera okay Woo. That was really, really difficult. Um, hardest thing I unboxed today. And we unboxed a lot today. Um, oh no, all my figures back here fell over. Let's go ahead and scoot everybody up. Get all these fer uh, ferocious packs up. Get the beta up. Oh, and why do you keep dropping your gun? Come on, man. You're not gonna be able to fight off dinosaurs if you keep dropping your only means of defense. Of course, we got the... Gotta have that fox too. Okay, here's Claire. She looks awesome. Um, Claire and Dilophosaurus. Oh. Should we look at the Dilophosaurus first and then get to the human figure, kind of like we did with the other pack? I say yes. Here it is. Oh, this thing is awesome. Uh, Dilophosaurus back for Dominion. And the toy is incredible looking. And it's bigger too. Uh, Jurassic Dave, another uh, toy collector who I'm friends with, pointed out that this is actually bigger than the previous Dilophosaurus. Um, this is the previous version attack pack. Um, it's, it's just a bigger figure. I mean, look at how much bigger the head is even. And the frill is different. I mean, this one's frill is a little bit more, it's like too perfectly round. Whereas the new one is like the actual film, a little more ratty and tattered. So bigger head, different frill. The body itself is, um, is bigger than the old one. I mean, it's the same exact sculpt. It's just bigger. It's just maybe 10, 15% bigger, which makes it just a little bit more substantial of a figure. And the, the paint on this one, I mean, you can see this was pr previously one of our probably most film accurate Dilophosaurs, but it's very vibrant, very bright, very like kind of uh, like a very vibrant green. This one's just a lot more muted. feels a little more realistic. The frill feels way more realistic. Um, and the, even the head has just everything. It just has a lot more uh, kind of toned down colors, right? I love this thing. And just like the other version, it comes with venom that you can stick in its mouth so it can be caught, you know, mid mid projectile venoming um oh man i love this thing though wow these uh this frill is so cool it folds back folds forward articulation it's got all the same articulation as that attack pack figure with the um the legs and the arms um, but really it's about the frill i mean come on that's what we're all here for it also has a scan tag in back you can pull out just like beta it's kind of in the opposite it's not in vertical it's in horizontal but it pulls out and blends in really well back there. I love the dark green they used on this. It's really cool. What an awesome figure. I mean, this Dilophosaurus is, it's everything. It's so cool. They have the mouth and the teeth painted. You can see there. 
Um, just a really, really, really nice figure. I love this thing. Love the little eyes back there. Just looks totally ferocious. So cool. Love it. Um, new Dilophosaurus, back for Dominion, coming here with this killer toy. I think we're getting at least one more Dilophosaurus toy for Dominion, um, but this one takes, this one's already just super, super impressive. So love what I'm seeing here. Lots of nice detail, really cool paint job. That's Dilophosaurus. And it's bigger too. We also have Claire, of course. We saw in the trailer, uh, Claire getting kind of yelled at um, up close and personal. So she obviously shares a scene with um, with the Dilophosaurus. Here's Claire, new outfit, new hairstyle, new everything. I will go ahead and do a quick comparison with the old Claire figure. Um, she's definitely taller, which is kind of funny. Um, but it, they, they are the same scale. I, I Again, I was thinking before I did this video that they were bigger figures, but maybe she's, I mean, she's noticeably taller, but she's the same scale. All the proportions are the same. Got a new jacket on. I will say her jacket fits her a little more um, kind of trimmer than it did on this other figure. She always kind of looked like she was wearing a rain jacket, and this is a little more form-fitting, which looks nice. Got nice detail there in the paint, uh, paint on the belt buckle, paint on the belt. Um, she's pale, man. She's really, I mean, I know Bryce Dallas Howard's pale, but this figure looks <laughs> especially pale, especially compared to Owen. But she's got that nice vibrant red hair as well. Different hairstyle. She's got painted boots. Um, similar articulation to, to Owen with the shoulder and the, uh, you know, the legs with the waist, waist articulation hip articulation, knee articulation. Literally the only thing missing on these figures that is on the Hammond collection is, is wrist articulation, if you ask me. I mean, I know those joints are a little more a little more complicated, so you can do some different articulation, but the stuff you can still do with these uh, basic three and three quarter figures is, is still really impressive. So um, really nice. I love the waist articulation. It looks really cool. Um, that's a the kind of an added bonus. And she has her, uh, she's got some accessories too, right? She's got this little tiny phone that I had a really hard time getting out. It's got a little tiny screen on it too. I don't know if you can see that. Little tiny screen printed on it. Lots of little detail on that phone. So she must have a phone in the movie that is of significance or some sort of, maybe it's a tracking device or something. So she can hold the phone in her hand. And she also comes with a gun. Really cool gun too. Look at this thing. Even more deluxe than Owen's gun. Um, it's got like a, a scope and it almost looks like that air rifle. Here's a, for comparison's sake, a gun from Fallen Kingdom um, that came with uh, Wheatley. But uh, even this new gun's bigger, <coughs> more detailed, all that good stuff. Looks really nice. Uh, I wonder if in the movie, you know, she's going to pack something this serious because this is a lot of firepower. Um, it almost looks like, yeah, like I said, it looks like a air rifle or something, but she's got the gun. Um, Owen's got the gun. I'm glad they're giving them guns and not like big ridiculous traps or random stuff like that. This, this feels a little more apt to play with in the movie. No, no Fox for her, right? Um, but her and the Dilophosaur, definitely my favorite toys I unboxed today because this Dilophosaur is just super rad. I mean, it is just so awesome. Must have toy for uh, Jurassic Collectors, this Dilophosaur. It's definitely by far the best Dilophosaur they've released easily. And you got Claire here looking great. We got Owen. Of course, blue shirt Owen is, um, you know, We've got versions of him, but this new one's got a lot of nice detail. It has that sheath. Comes with some cool accessories, so, you know, worth owning. These are just really nice packs, I think, that Mattel's coming out with. They're like $15. You get a dinosaur, you get a human, you get a bunch of accessories. So lots to play with, especially after not having human figures in the main line for so long. I'm happy to see them back. And, uh, you know, Mattel's done a great job um, kind of bringing them back in um, to the main line. I love... Gotta love all these, all these human figures. It's just nice to have them to go with our dinosaurs. Um, so that's pretty much everything I can talk about for these figures. Again, we looked at Ferocious Pack with some really cool figures like um, uh, Desundaripterus and Miragaya. Uh, we also have Velociraptor Blue and Moros. And then um, Beta, Dilophosaur, Owen, and Claire. And of course, don't forget little Fox here. Love it. 
Really cool stuff from Mattel um, all together. Just more and more Dominion toys every day. They are spoiling us. So much awesome stuff. I'll be back again, of course, with more reviews because there's still more toys to come, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, I'm Tim with Collect Jurassic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.